Hi everyone, my name is Ongun and I'm a lab assistant at the Cutler Center of Finance. Today I will be covering 10 Bloomberg functions that will help you get started with the Bloomberg terminal and also help you with company and market research process. To start off, what is the Bloomberg terminal? The Bloomberg terminal is one of the most commonly used investment research platform. It is a great tool to stay up to date with the markets and find financial, economic and market research related data. As you can see in the screen, the Bloomberg terminal might look a bit unusual and intimidating in the beginning, but it is actually a very easy to use platform. The good news is all Babson students can access a course offered by Bloomberg called Bloomberg Market Concepts, which will guide you through the basic uses of Bloomberg. You will also receive a certification from Bloomberg if you complete the course. The entire course takes about eight hours to complete, and the course can be accessed through your personal computer once you have registered an account through the Bloomberg Terminal in Cutler Center. Please contact the Cutler Center if you have any questions regarding the Bloomberg Market Concepts course. Today, I will show you 10 Bloomberg functions that have been very helpful in my investment research process. This will help you understand how powerful Bloomberg is as an investment research platform. This tutorial is also a great place to start, but again, I highly encourage you to take the Bloomberg Market Concepts course to have a more in-depth understanding of the Bloomberg Terminal. Once you have created an account with Bloomberg, you can enter your login credentials to log into Bloomberg and you'll be redirected to the shared page. The way Bloomberg works is there is a text box at the upper left corner of the screen. You have to type in different functions here and Bloomberg will return related information. For today's tutorial, I'll be covering mostly functions related to equities. And in order to use any of the equity related functions, you have to first go to the equity. And for today's tutorial, I will be using Apple as an example. So in order to use any of the equity related function I have to go to the equity first which is Apple US equity and you can see once I start typing in something in the text box Bloomberg starts giving me different suggestions and I'm trying to go to the Apple US equity security so um, I go to this that suggestion and click enter and once I go to the Apple US equity Bloomberg gives me this related functions menu and what this menu is showing me different functions and a brief description of what that function does. So here I can see the first function is DES and the description is it's, it gives you a security description. So let me type in DES and press enter. You can also click into click on DES from the related functions menu and uh, and uh, here is a note, the related functions menu always stays at the top. So you can always click there to see it. So here in the DES function, you can see that the security description provides me with a very brief company description, uh, uh, overview of the stock performance, some estimates and ratios, and also some contact information. So this is a very useful function if you do not know much about the company and you want to learn what they do, uh, where they're located and where their customers are, uh, what are their different product segments. This is a good place to come to, to learn about the company. The next function that we're gonna look at is FA. FA stands for financial analysis and the stock gives you a more detailed view of the financials of a company. So for Apple, the first page we can see are the key stats, which present some of the main income statement lines and how they have been performing over, uh, the, over a certain historical period. You can also look at the income statement of a company, the balance sheet cash flow uh, over here with the FA function. And more importantly, something what you, which you can very easily find in Bloomberg is the different segment related revenues. So here you can see once I go to segment, uh, 
Bloomberg is listing out all the revenues related to different product lines. So here we can see 85% of Apple's revenues are from its product and the rest, 15% uh, are from services. And also 62% of, of its revenues are from iPhones. So this is a good place if you want to learn more in detail about the financials of a company. Here you can also see that you, it is the revenues are also segmented by geography. So this is also very useful if you want to learn how the geographical presence of a company is. The next function that I'm going to discuss is EQRV. EQRV stands for Equity Related Valuation. So now that you've looked at the financials of Apple, you might want to know who are the competitors of Apple? Who are the, which are which ones are the comparable companies, and how how Apple is trading uh, relative to those companies? So here you can see that Apple doesn't have many competitors um, or comparable companies, given the exceptional nature of Apple. Uh, it is understandable, and we can see that Apple's the the mean. Apple is selling at a premium compared to the mean um, mean of the ratios. So that means that Apple is valued at a premium for some reason compared to its competitors. So as we as we look at the EQRV, we are already starting to um, have some idea about the valuation of Apple that it is valued at a premium for some reason. So now. The next function that we're going to look at is CF. CF stands for company filings. And the CF function is very useful to find all sorts of information filed by Apple. So here you can file all the 10Qs, 10Ks, uh, investor presentations, and earnings call transcripts, everything uh, that related to the company, like all sorts of information that the company has shared. This is a very useful place if you want to do a detailed research and you want to learn uh, what the company thinks about how the company thinks about the future, what are the risks that the company thinks they have, uh, and what are the gu what guidance they're setting for the next quarters. This is a this is the function that you want to use, which is CF, which stands for Company Filings. The next function that we'll be covering is A and R. ANR stands for Analyst Recommendations. So what this function shows you is there are many fa uh, financial analysts who are covering the Apple stock. And a br this gives you a brief overview of what they think about the stock. So here you can see that the, out of all the 48 analysts who cover Apple, 30 are thinking that you should still buy it. 11 think that you should hold it if you ha already have it in the portfolio, but not buy it anymore. And three think that you should sell the stock. And you can see how like all the 49, 48 analysts and their research over here. So uh, this is a brief overview of their research. And like they, 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 you can see the price target of each of the analysts are listed here. And Bloomberg also gives some ranks based on the analyst predictions and performance. Uh, but if you want to know more about their research in depth, the function that you need to use is BRC. BRC gives you most of the beer research reports available for Apple or the company that you're researching. So. Uh, I can I can go to any of these reports, and for example, this is a report by J.P. Morgan, and it's showing me why the analyst thinks the price target is the, whatever he's suggesting, and why he thinks it's a buy rating. Why what what are the risks associated with Apple on based on his opinion or her opinion? Uh, I can see all of that. Uh, using the BRC portal. The next function that we are going to discuss is 
CN. CN stands for Individual Company News. And once you have looked at the analyst reports, that gives you a more, more of an analysis of what uh, the analysts think about the stock. But if you just want to find more of the latest news about Apple, uh, CN is the function that you need to use. CN is, is a place where Bloomberg aggregates all sorts of news related to the equity you're looking into. And this is a great place to stay updated with the company that you're researching and, and where you can find the latest news. The next function that we will be covering is DSCO. DSCO is a company document search function. So for example, uh, you, you have looked at the company financials, you have looked at the company's news, but you don't, you want specific information about something. For example, you want to know more about the latest chip that Apple is making, which is Apple Silicon. Uh, and you don't want to read through all the, all the filings, or you don't want to go through each of the filings and search through them at a time. So Bloomberg makes it very easy to find that kind of information. So what you have to do is go to DSCO and type in the sort of information you're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for Apple Silicon uh, and I can look for exact match. And you can see that here, all the documents where Apple mentioned Apple Silicon or is listed out. So I can go into each of them and see what the analysts think about it or what Apple is saying about it um, from this from the document search portal, which is very, this is a very helpful place if you are trying to find any specific information like the market, um, market share of a company or a new product line. Uh, you can pretty much find everything the company said about it or what the analysts think about it. The next function that we will be covering is not related to equities anymore. So this was the last function we covered related to equities. And now we'll be covering some functions which are more about the entire market uh, than a particular equity. So top is a very useful function to stay up to date with the top news of the day. So if you type in top, Bloomberg will list out all the top uh, news news articles and stories uh, which you should look at for the day to stay to learn about what's happening in the market currently. Uh, this is a good place to uh, to know what's going on in the market, look at the headlines uh, without spending much time. So this is something uh, I usually look on a daily basis to stay updated with the market. And the next and last function that I'm going to talk about in this uh, tutorial is the BI function, which stands for Bloomberg Intelligence. This is a very important function if you're start trying to understand an industry in depth and understand what are the trends. You do not want just news sources. You want some detailed reports on that. This is a very good place to come. So you can see in industries, um, all the different sectors are listed out. You can go to each of the sectors and find the industries there. So if I go to if I go to technology, um, I want to learn more about the application software industry. So once you click there, Bloomberg will take you to this research portal where it will show you some of the featured research and also an industry outlook. Usually the industry outlooks are very informative and detailed. It shows you some of the key stats related to the industry, some of the trends going on, the outlook, um, and some information related to the major players of the industry. So this is a very helpful place if you're trying to learn more about our industry. And finally, thank you for watching the tutorial. I hope it helped you get started with Bloomberg. Uh, if you have any questions related to the Bloomberg terminal, 
please feel free to reach out to the Cutler Center. We'll try to help answer your questions or concerns. Uh, thank you all. I, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.